go ahead. Uh, so next up is Wyatt. And his the title of his talk is Distribution of Herpes Simplex Virus Type 1 Infection in Wild Type Mice Following Intranasal Inoculation. This is one of the bench research projects. Take it away, Wyatt. All right. So I assume you guys can see my screen and hear me just fine. Uh, thank yes. you, Dr. Salcedo, for the introduction. And thank you for everybody who showed up to this presentation. This is awesome. Um, so yes, like Dr. Salcedo said, uh, my capstone, I looked at the distribution of HSV-1 infection in, in the brains of wild-type mice following intranasal inoculation. Um, so the reason HSV-1 infection is so important is because we think it might be linked to Alzheimer's disease. So Alzheimer's disease is a progressive neurodegenerative d d disease of the central nervous system. It's characterized by inflammation, protein deposition, and cellular dysfunction. It's important to note that the first areas of the brain affected by Alzheimer's disease are uh, hippocampus and olfactory bulbs. So sporadic Alzheimer's disease accounts for over 90% of all Alzheimer's disease cases. This implies that environmental factors are probably at play. So we asked the question, could viruses be involved, specifically herpes simplex virus type 1 or HSV1? So HSV1, colloquially known as herpes, is a part of the herpes veridae family of DNA viruses. Um, it, herpes typically infects sensory neurons around the mouth, which during reactivation cause cold sores, but more severely, it's the leading cause of encephalitis worldwide. Uh, this virus is extremely common. In 2012, it was estimated that 67% of people under 50 years old around the world were infected with HSV1. Uh, so that's some 3.7 billion people. And in 2016, it was estimated that almost 50% of young Americans were infected with the virus. So HSV-1 is characterized by a lifelong infection um, with recurrent reactivation with or without cold sores. Uh, so recently, a meta-analysis was done, and it concluded that those with HSV-1 were 2.5 times more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease than those without HSV-1. Um, and also it was shown that Alzheimer's disease associated beta amyloid is rapidly seeded by herpes virus to protect against brain infection. So we hypothesize that HSV-1 will be present in the olfactory bulbs and hippocampus following intranasal inoculation. And we also, also hypothesize that Alzheimer's disease like pathologies such as inflammation and cellular dysfunction will also be present in HSV-1 infected brains and that the mode of entry of the virus to the central nervous system was through the olfactory system. Um, so what we did was we took wild type mice, we infected them intranasally with uh, HSV-1 for five to seven days. We then took their brains and I sliced them coronally into 40 micron sections. I then stained those slices for HSV-1, IBA-1, which is a marker for microglia, uh, GFAP, which is a marker for astrocytes, and then we imaged those slices. I then took every six slice and counted the amount of cells infected with HSV-1 and where in the brain those cells were located. So the distribution looks like this. Here we have a, a, a pie chart of the distribution, and down here are the raw um, cell counts, and this is just of one representative animal. So you can see that almost 90% of the infection is in the brainstem, a little more than 5% in the hypothalamus, 2% uh, in the thalamus, a little more than 1% or 34 cells in the paraaqueductal gray. 14 cells were infected in the amygdala, only one cell was infected in the olfactory bulb and no cells were infected in the hippocampus. So now let's take a look at some of these highly infected areas. First, the brainstem. So here's a, a cross section of the brainstem. On the left is a immunofluorescent image of the HSV-1 infection. And on the right is a schematic of the same cross section. Um, and so you can see the highly infected areas include the medullary reticular nucleus, the spinal nucleus of trigeminal, and the spinal tract of trigeminal. Because of this, we speculate that it was the trigeminal nerve that acted as the mode of entry for the virus. Another area that was highly infected was the hypothalamus. So unfortunately, this image didn't come out in color, but you can see the HSV-1 is in white here and it's in very specific areas of the hypothalamus, namely the lateral hypothalamic area, the paraventricular nucleus, and the dorsomedial hypothalamic nucleus. 
So let's take a look at some of these implications of the infection in the hypothalamus. So as most of us know, the hypothalamus regulates hormone secretion in the brain and body, and is, which are responsible for many homeostatic functions. It's also involved in social behaviors, anxiety, and depression. It's comprised of 11 major nuclei, but like I said, we saw the HSV-1 infection in three specific nuclei, namely the paraventricular nucleus, which is responsible for oxytocin and vasopressin production, the dorsomedial hypothalamic nucleus, which is responsible for circadian rhythm and appetite, and the lateral hypothalamic area, which is responsible for wakefulness and appetite. So destruction of neurons in these areas can lead to different disease uh, like diabetes insipidus and narcolepsy. So now that we've looked at some of the distribution of the infection, let's talk about the immune response that we saw. So here we have a mock infected mouse or a control mouse and we've imaged the brainstem, olfactory bulb and hypothalamus and we've stained for microglia in green. Uh, in this mock infected mouse, you can see that the microglia are at rest. We know this because of the relatively small cell body and long cell processes. Uh, now let's look at a infected mouse. We, these are the same areas, so the brainstem, olfactory bulb, and hypothalamus, and you can see that these microglia are activated by the relatively large cell body and shrunken in cell processes. So this indicates an active immune response is happening. Additionally, we also saw cell dysfunction. So in the top row, we've taken images of the brainstem, in the bottom row, images of the hypothalamus. And in the first column, uh, we've stained for the virus. In the next column, we've stained for GFAP, which is an astrocyte marker. And when we merge the two images, we see little to no GFAP in the infected areas. So in conclusion, uh, in terms of the viral distribution under these experimental conditions, our hypothesis was not supported just because we saw little to no viral antigen in the olfactory bulbs and hippocampus. However, we did see HSV-1 was abundant in areas of the brain that have direct pathways to the hippocampus, namely the hypothalamus and amygdala. So in terms of the Alzheimer's disease characteristics, an active immune response was present in HSV-1 infected brains, which was shown by the activated microglia. Um, and also cellular dysfunction was also present in HSV-1 infected brains. We saw this by the down regulation of that GFAP astrocyte marker. So in future directions, we'd like to do time course and dose response studies where we test different levels of the virus to produce latency and recurrent infection. We'd also like to do behavioral experiments in HSV-1 infected mice to see if infection of the hypothalamus does change their behavior. I'd like to give a huge thank you and acknowledgement to the Nagel Lab, um, to the Restrepo Lab, and to all those in the Modern Human Anatomy program that helped me with this project this year. Not to downplay uh, everyone else's role, but really a huge, huge thank you to Dr. Christy Niemeyer. Um, thank you guys so much. Any questions? Thank you, Wyatt. Um, we now have time for any questions. Please feel free to submit them to the chat box. Um, I have a question, uh, yeah. Wyatt. Um, so in your kind of future directions, you discussed uh, behavioral studies. Do you have any idea of what that might look like? Yeah, sure. So when we saw where the infection occurred, it occurred in very specific spots in the hypothalamus. Um, so we might do behavioral studies that have to do with feeding. Do mice have a lack of appetite or too much appetite. Uh, behavioral studies with sleep, do they sleep more often or less often if they're infected with HSV-1? Um, behavioral studies that have to do with anxiety or depression where we might put a mouse in a box and see if, if they stay on the sides of the box in the corners more often than mice say uh, that aren't infected go to the middle, things like that. Excellent. And then uh, just one more quick question. Uh, let's see here. How do you think the virus got to the hypothalamus? Oh, that's a great question. So um, when it got to the brainstem, we think it got there through the trigeminal nerve, but it was also in the nucleus of the solitary tract. And the nucleus of the solitary tract has uh, direct projections to the hypothalamus because of the, all the autonomic uh, processes that um, occur in the nucleus of the solitary tract. Okay. 
Excellent. Thank you. That's all the time we have for those for the for questions for Wyatt. Um, thanks again. Thank Good you. Good work.